What up, players? It's Wallboss Tap, and this month today we're gonna get started on our Vestigore. This is how far we get today after about a half hour work, half hour's worth of work. The colors we're gonna need are Steel Legion Drab, Karak Stone for the skin, <clears throat> Dryad Bark, Abaddon Black, uh, Lead Belcher. Doom Bull Brown, Balthazar Gold, and I believe that is it. So, hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you in the next one. Hee haw! Hee haw! Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna base all the gold sections with Balthazar Gold here. Get the paints out of the way. Now, the first thing you want to do when painting any model on plastic is to primer your model. I always use a flat gray primer, duplicolor, and it always works really well for me. Paint sticks right on it and it's nice and matte, which means that it is not glossy or shiny and that's kind of what you want because you don't want you don't want it to reflect. So this Bestigore color scheme is one of the alternate color schemes on Games Workshop's website. I feel it's the most, uh, I guess, realistic. I think some, some tribes might paint their, their armor, but overall, I feel like, you know, a rampaging army of mutant goat men would just kind of get the armor plates, smash them, hammer them into shape, put them on, strap them on however you can, and then go to battle. So that's kind of what we're doing. Now if you uh, are not familiar with the Beastman army, I was not myself for a while when I was getting back into the hobby. didn't know what all the difference was between a gore and ungore, a best of gore, just now uh, the name's all kind of confusing and disconcerting. A gore, Beastman Gore, is a regular standard foot trooper, and he's like your, he's like your uh, typical goat-looking half goat, half man. And ungore is like a weaker version of that. And ungores are usually or from all the fluff and stuff, Ungors are usually humans and not strong humans but like commoners and farmers and villagers who've somehow mutated and uh, either through warp stone or through some terrible happenstance and coincidence and then they turn to animalistic mutant beastmen so they become Ungors and they have small horns. They're not really accepted by the rest of the tribe for a long time, if ever. And um, that's their lot in life once they mutate. Bestigors, like these guys, are full-fledged um, mutant beastmen. They started life or their existence as beastmen and they have just fought their way to the top of the food chain. Their horns are longer. I guess horns are, the size of one's horns in a beastman army are very indicative of where they are in the great chain of command of their, of their herd. Um, yeah. So, this guy here is like a, a leader of his herd. All Vestigors are armed with two-handed weapons, which helps them smash things apart. So the goal is we're gonna make this look eventually pretty like a dull muted brass or bronze so this gold color is perfect as a base.
You could also add little touches to your models if you favor a specific god, like personally myself, I like the fact or like the idea of uh, the god, chaos god Zinch, transforming law-abiding imperial troopers and soldiers and citizens into these mutants. So. I have a lot of uh, blues. For those of you who watched my Beastman, How to Paint the Beastman Gore video, this guy is going to um, hopefully match a little bit the colors, color wise. Okay, next we're going to do Lead Belcher on the Chainmail. If you go to the Games Workshop website and you look up the um, models that I'm using as a, as a base, inspiration, then you will see that um, it's the farthest on the right, and it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty, pretty savage. Let's actually start with the, his axe up here. And I think I mentioned in one of my other Beastman videos how it's kind of sad that they're not all random, mutated, um, and they don't all look like random, like they used to. When I first started the hobby, the first thing I did was played Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Volume or ver Version One, the first edition that was written in like the late '80s, early '90s, and um, in the f in the I guess like the most famous, most popular campaign called The Enemy Within. It starts off their first uh, adversaries are a bunch of a bunch of beastmen in the road and in fact the first enemy you fight it's revealed that if you have a thief or a rogue in your party uh, that character will recognize the beastmen feasting on the bodies of, of a coach that they had attacked on the road and uh, I thought that was I thought that was a great way to start the story if you know you recognize your character recognizes someone it's kind of brings it close to home instead of just like a nameless band of goblins or skeletons or something. The fact that uh, you could end up like one of these creatures and he didn't look like a goat neither. He wasn't like some goat man. Uh, it, I think if I remember correctly the your character sees this poor wretched creature feasting on the corpses of some slain coachmen in the road and then it just looks like Looks like the person you used to know, but all wild and feral and savage, and like the one mutation was that he had like something wrong with his skin, like it was, it was like rotting off of his body or something like that. But I just remember reading it and thinking like that is so cool. And then he has a whole bunch of of other beastmen accompanying him, or uh, other mutants. They're called mutants. Then they weren't called beastmen, and like the mutants, like one of them had like bird beak instead of a mouth another one had like a third arm and I think one had like a shrunken head there like there were weird mutations like that rather than when chaos touches you you become a goat man I thought that was kind of a missed opportunity for the games workshop um, but I think at the time, you know, they didn't have the means to make an army of mutants. Could you imagine how cool it would be if, like, instead of having beastmen, they had a mutant army? And um, it just came with a whole bunch of different, like, spawn sprues and, and human-like bodies. And you can just, like, make up whatever you want. However you want your guys to look, that's, that's what they'll look like. That would be so cool. We're also going to paint the little... If you have tips on your horns, I'm using a champion model. You might not have a, a champion mod... Uh, or you might be using a regular guy. I'm not sure if the regular Vestigors have these little tips on their horns. If they don't, then just uh, skip this section. Let's move on to the next part. Can't forget the chainmail around the face. As well as the little Nurgle eyeball protectors. 
Nurgle-esque eyeball protectors. Yeah, I remember first edition wasn't full of grim dark, it was just more like light-hearted fun. A little bit of grim dark, but like it wasn't just steeped in it like it is today. For example, there's this one um boatman. And his name was I think it was like Joseph Quart Gin. Like a quart of gin. I just thought that was so funny. Okay, so that should do it. Okay, next thing we're gonna take, while that's drying, we're gonna take Ricarth Flesh and we're gonna paint the, um, looks like, you see the horns in Ricarth Flesh. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay as close as I can to this model because it looks so cool. But there might be some some variation. So if you play Beastmen, I would be interested in hearing from you and how you are doing in this new, not really new, but in this environment of Warhammer 8th edition. I haven't played, geez, I, it's been so long since I've even played a game. I don't think I've, I haven't played a single 8th edition game. It's been, uh, it's been hard. Personally, like my schedule is so crazy, and I don't have a regular group of friends that play, so I have not had the chance to really play much. But I love the game. I love the fluff. So, and I love to paint. So, what are you gonna do? God, my paint is acting kind of weird. I think I don't like about these new paints, like the foundation paints, like I like the colors, I like the most, I, I don't know if I want to say I like it because I think there are a lot better paint brands out there, but overall painting with the Games Workshop's quote unquote new paint range um, hasn't been completely disappointing for me. The only thing is that it's so, it really, um, really covers thickly, if that makes sense. Be quiet, baby time again. Oh. I don't know if you heard that Maki just tried to uh, climb the <laughs> climb up into the closet and he fell down. You stupid cat. <laughs> so Ricard Flesh is like in general, it's a great color for bones, skulls, horns. Maybe not necessarily hooves, but just we're definitely gonna paint all these all these skulls in Ricard flesh as well. 
Sorry, everybody. Wait, what is what is this? What is this thing hanging off the left side of his hip? I'm gonna paint it like a person. You know, Games Workshop love their skulls. And he's also holding a uh, a victim's head. So we're gonna paint the skull underneath because that is revealed, and the teeth. Okay, I believe that is all the bone. Okay. Next we're gonna take some Here we go, some Steel Legion Drab, and this is going to be the base of our Bestagore's skin color. So we're gonna try to get everything that is skin and not, um, not fur. I think the fur is a little bit darker. So if you can, try to stick to the, the skin areas. And now this is just a general guide as well because Games Workshop is so awesome about making lots of different torsos and and whatnot. So uh, your guy might have stuff that this one doesn't. This one might have things that yours doesn't. So just you know, kind of you you have th that really gives you access to be or permission, I should say, to be as creative as you want with painting the various doodads and doohickeys and whatnot. Okay, I thought Steel Legion Drab was gonna work. It might not. Another... Another color might be in order for the skin, but for now, this is fine. I think as a base, this is fine. And we'll highlight up in a second. See what I mean? Like, look how how much detail obscuring this foundation paint is. I think as long as you spread it around, it's it's okay. You just can't let it sit in a big blob if you're if you're painting one area. Okay. So what next? What next? It looks like the um, the axe is like a dark black wood. So we'll use Abaddon black. It looks like a yeah, like a dark black wood with light gray highlights. So the half of the axe will be black. The wrappings, on the other hand, look to be like they are. color is that? I would say Doom Bull Brown. Let's go with that. Um, we'll let it dry a little bit longer though. Dryad Bark for, for the fur. 
Yeah, that's Steel Legion Drab is definitely too brown. I've got something else we can do, but this is a good base color, it's fine. Oh, uh, but what was I looking at? Dryad Bark, here we go. Dryad Bark for the fur. So we're looking specifically like behind the legs, by the hands. bottom of the legs by the hooves by the hooves oh wait no that's the shirt little goatee That's funny. Just realized that. <laughs> Little goatee. He's a goat man. Okay. Um, so now, yeah, let's say it's about dry enough where we can do some Doombo Brown onto wrappings as well as any other straps, belts, so forth, so on. Anything that would be like made out of like leather. So you can also use this for the wrappings here around this club. Sorry folks if the angle gets kind of weird. Holding the model at a weird position right now. Okay, and wrappings here around the horns of his waist. Anything that looks like it's strapped to his body or wrapped around wrapped around something like a weapon and whatnot. Okay. Is it sandry dust that we're looking for? Is a little bit more light. It's a little bit more light. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Is it just record flesh? Might be. No, record flesh looks like it's too light. Oh, the conundrum. Let's let's do sandry dust. Why don't we? I have to cut it soon because we're almost running on half an hour, but the base coats are usually the uh, the step that takes the longest, so we should be in the clear. This, nah, this looks a little too yellow. <gasps> oh, you know what? We might have to go to like Carrack Stone. All my carefully laid out plans are being changed on the fly because it's not coming out the way I thought it would. Let's see if Carrack Stone will do any better. Yeah, okay, so whatever your, if you use Steel Legion Drab as a base coat, which is what I did, then that's fine because Carrack Stone is going to be your 
highlight color, which is going to go over it. It's going to take it from that brownish kind of kind of color to this more, as you would say, bone creamy kind of beige. So this is it, Carac Stone. If you don't have this, you could also use Rackhart Flesh. For a while, though, it's going to look very similar to like your bones and your horns and uh, that stuff, but that's okay because it's just going to be for a little while. This is just base coats and it's only until we get into the washes. Once we get into the shades, then things will be much different. I think the most important thing to remember is just don't leave clumps of paint when you slap paint on even if you're just using a little bit make sure that you spread it out um, that's like the best form of advice I could give to anybody new or even anyone who's been painting for a long time can agree with me that that's like the best way to do it Yeah, this cream color is more close to what the Games Workshop website has. So it's perfect. And with the Steel Legion drab under, it's uh it's a nice it's a nice contrast, I think. If you can keep it there. Got a couple more straps to do, then we'll end it here for video one. Um, 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 um. This color clothes. What color is clothes is he wearing? It looks like he's wearing like a dark, dark black. Yeah, you can't really tell from the picture from the front side. So we got a couple more things, and then we'll be done for a step or for video one. First thing is we're gonna take dryad bark, and we're gonna make this the uh, color of any wood that's on our guy like this little wood club he has hanging from his hip just double check also to make sure you've got all the fur like here's a sneaky one you might not get the first time is right on the back of his hand all goat men usually have that Okay, uh, we're also going to use, oh, I forgot a couple things, Mornfang Brown, or I'm sorry, not Mornfang Brown, but Dryad Bark for the little ropes hanging down that are holding the skulls to him. Okay, and let's go with black robes, Abaddon black, or chaos black, I got them both, prefer to use chaos black, ah.
it's good that we're using black because you, you can also paint the inside of like this chainmail area to kind of pretend that it doesn't exist or here under the sleeve to pretend like it's empty space as well as the sleeve itself which we will highlight up with so that it doesn't all just look like a big shadow I forgot I forgot his actual belt talking about painting all the belts and I forgot his actual belt Alright players, so that is going to end it for part one, I believe. The next thing we're going to do is, in part two, we're going to get to some more base coats, like the, the head hanging from his waist, uh, anything else that needs a base coat, then we'll do a wash, and then we will uh, finish by highlighting up the clothes, as well as the metallics. I know right now that the gold metallics are going to look really nice when we make them into a nice bronze. So thanks for watching us and um, thanks for staying the whole time and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.